Hello and welcome to World Canvas from the University of Iowa's International Programs. We're coming to you this afternoon from the Senate Chamber of the Old Capitol Museum on the campus of the University of Iowa. Very happy to have you all with us today. On tonight's program, we'll be joined by an expert panel of guests to discuss the rise of public opinion in China. Public opinion, as we know, is inevitably linked with political action and political change in 21st century America. But the connection between public opinion and mass political action, or even institutional change, is not limited to the US or to Western democracies. On the contrary, it's an increasingly important and influential factor globally. In this first part of our four-part series, we'll discuss public opinion and political reform with three influential political scientists from China. To my left is Mr. Dali Yang, professor of political science and faculty director at the University of Chicago Center in Beijing. Thank you for being here, Professor Yang. It's my pleasure. And next to him is Professor Li Li Chang, professor of political science and director of the Institute of Social Science Survey at Peking University. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank you. And our third guest is Professor Yu Keping, Professor of Political Science and the Director of the Center for Chinese Government Innovation at Peking University. Thank you for joining us. Yes, my pleasure. Thank you. And we have a translator with us this evening as well. Graduate student, I think, in the Department of Political Science here at the University of Iowa, Ms. Shui Jin. So thank you for being with us. Thank you. So uh, I have to throw out the first question, and any of you can jump in to take it, but perhaps I'll just start with you, Professor Yang, and ask you to tell us a little bit about how public opinion affects life in today's China. Well, in many ways, uh, if we think back uh, to 30 years ago when China was just starting to reform, it was a country with a very small number of newspapers. All information generally flowed from up to on the bottom. Uh, there was actually very little public opinion. In fact, anyone who's saying anything actually deviant could end up in big political trouble. Mm -hmm. Today, this is a nation of smartphones, of the internet, of uh, microblogging. Uh, the economy has diversified. Young people could watch, could, uh, uh, could watch US TV essentially on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So this is a remarkably different country. But at the same time, they also have interest to pursue. They have a lot of complaints, whether it's about the environment or other issues. And they want their views to be known. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, actually, public opinion has become a, a part of the uh, Chinese political fabric. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, officials pay attention, especially because very often local officials are held accountable for local stability. So if something goes wrong, then they could take the blame, and therefore they actually increasingly mm -hmm. are paying attention to the aggregations in particular of public opinion mm -hmm. in this regard. Mm -hmm. And would you say China, of course, is such a huge country, so, so many people, so many regions. Would you say that um, the uh, responsiveness to public opinion varies from one part of the country to another? What do you think, Professor Li? Uh, yes, I think as, uh, as uh, Professor Yang has indicated, there has been uh, increasingly uh, a strong development of public opinions, and of course, as a, uh, through some more formal channels and also informal channels. And uh, in terms of formal channels, and uh, newspapers, magazines, and uh, now we have various ownerships of newspapers, magazines, and also various uh, professional workers in these areas. They have uh, plural ideas. And, uh, and also, in addition to that, the recent development of uh, uh, internet, internet blogs, and uh, Twitter, in the Chinese we call the Weibo, but in fact, the Twitter, and also the uh, WeTalk, so all those things have uh, produced and, uh, a huge volume of uh, public opinions about the Chinese public policy, and also sometimes about politics. Of course, the, the degree of involvement are quite different. The young people and the people who have uh, university graduate degrees may have been more active in using these kind of tools to express their ideas, particularly young people in the cities. In the countryside, probably the old people are more passive in this regard.
Show your Iowa pride. The Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. The ultimate collection of Iowa Hawkeye merchandise, gifts, and apparel. Help support the University of Iowa. All proceeds benefit men's and women's athletic teams and student programs. The Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. Show your Iowa pride. Call 1-800-HAWK-SHOP or visit www.hawkshop.com. There are over 24,000 bridges in Iowa. But only one connects University of Iowa hospitals and clinics to Iowa River Landing. From pediatrics and women's health to cardiology and routine exams, world-class medical care can be found at a new convenient location in Coralville. Iowa River Landing is here, and it's designed just for you. For an appointment, call 319-467-2000. And uh, what have you seen happen over the last, um, say, 20 years um, in terms of the opening of the press, the sort of official, uh, not official, but the, what should I say, the more um, um, yeah, business kind of organized forms of, of communication with the public, something like a, a China Daily or some of the other newspapers on the one hand, and then social media coming along on the other. Uh, what, what have you um, seen happen uh, with the kind of conversation that takes place about, about public activities, whether it's the need for um, uh, addressing pollution concerns or whether it's uh, a complaint about one's own university. Um, have you been surprised by how much, um, how vocal the uh, Chinese public is? So apparently, China has um, this huge economic growth in the past 20 years. But besides that, Chinese society has gone through uh, many more important changes. One of them is the, um, so the development of civil society and the openness um, in the media. Uh,中国改革开放前呢,中国的社会是高度一体化的,就是政治,经济,国家与社会不分的。那么经过这个三十周年的改革呢,这个社会的结构呢,开始分化。社会呢,就是有三个相对独立的系统呢,开始形成。So before the reform and opening policy, Chinese society is very like centralized. And but after that, uh, that's not true anymore. So the society has um, been growing, and uh, public has become more active in terms of public discourse of many uh, public issues. Mm -hmm. 所以这个公共活动空间这个扩大以后呢,对整个中国社会的生活呢产生非常深刻的影响,包括对中国的政治生活。And these openings in the public discourse has important um, implications for normal lives in China and especially also uh, have implications for Chinese politics. 我觉得特别值得一提的是, 
中国这个互联网，互联网呢是现在中国是互联网的大国，网民已经超过六个亿，这是一个特别重要的公共活动空间。So especially we need to、uh, pay attention to the internet, the development of internet in China, and people who are active in internet. The number of people who are active in internet has、um, has over has、um, has been over like six uh six uh sixty million six hundred million sorry、yeah. my mistake yeah yeah huge numbers and we see here in our own country that there's a great deal of activity on the internet some of it seems to be serious you know. Political and social discourse, and some of it is just random frustration or、um, maybe anger and and whatnot.、Um, I suspect the same dynamics are at play in China.、Uh, that that some of the、um, some serious concerns about、uh, quest for political change would be expressed in microblogs and in other、um, forms on the internet. But、um, is is there? We know that what we think of as Facebook is not the same Facebook that you use in China. You have you have Renren, you have Weibo, you have very active social media、uh, sites. But、um, uh, do you, is there a great deal of government oversight over those platforms? Well, I think the interesting issue in China is there are limits to organized political activity, especially in terms of. If you want to act against the government, even if you want, for example, to organize a group of people to、uh, do a protest, the law says you have to get approval. But rarely do they get approval.、Mm -hmm. Now there is a thing, however, about the emergence of the microblogging services, the、uh, Weibo and WeChat. Is with the Weibo, essentially, have freedom of opinion because、mm -hmm. people can express what they believe in. They very often are very heavily engaged. Many people are very dedicated to spreading ide ideas of the need for participation,、mm -hmm. of democracy, of accountability, and transparency. And、mm -hmm. then there is the saying that with the emergence of the WeChat, which actually is not just limited to China, is increasingly being spread ar around the world. In fact, it's gaining uh, uh, users around the world. Uh, essentially, is a private, almost like a Facebook, like that. You、yeah. can sign up for friends,、mm -hmm. and it, immediately hundreds of people could、mm -hmm. get organized in many、yeah. ways. So that's the way how those services already are reshaping the、mm -hmm. relationship between the state and society.、Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we have seen in、um, certain parts of the world, and we could use some examples in the United States that some of us are familiar with. But if you think about what happened in the Middle East, what happened in Egypt, various places,、uh, you know, Syria, Iran, where a number of、um, very important, major political actions were undertaken, really、um, uh, 
uh, with uh, the, the very great um, uh, impact of social media. People were able to say, we will meet at this corner at this time on this date, and, and then suddenly the crowds emerge. It's a different world than five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and um, I think we hear our politicians in this country um, express some, um, uh, maybe not, I don't know if the word is concern, but certainly question what will all of this mean because uh, um, communication happens in an instant and crowds can appear in an instant. Certainly that would be true in China as well. Is there concern about social media activity as far as you're aware uh, within governmental circles, Professor Lee? Uh, okay, I think so. I think it's, uh, uh, of course, with this uh, new kind of uh, social medias, the information uh, pass uh, goes through very fast, and it's uh, not uh, uh, quite easy uh, to control. I think uh, particularly uh, in the case of China, if we are familiar mm -hmm. with the internet, microblog, and all those Weibo, the discussion about the social and the political issues probably are, uh, occupies much more significant places than, for instance, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. If we, uh, I, I sometimes happen to check the newspapers, uh, microblogs in the U.S. newspapers, and uh, not many, because the, the formal uh, newspapers are more open, so the, the microblogs uh, does not play that uh, significant role in uh, transforming the information. But in China, I think the, this kind of microblogs and uh, Weibo become, have become uh, uh, one of the most important channels for information flow, and particularly for the information in social and uh, economic, uh, political affairs. This, of course, is uh, uh, quite important, and also uh, because it's an important political fact, of course, the uh, people, pay, uh, including the leadership, pay much more attention. However, I think it's the, uh, the, the, there's some uh, differences with the uh, Middle East. For I think the, the, the information flow alone does not uh, uh, it's not enough to cause a political, uh, uh, this kind of a, uh, revolt. Uh, the, one of the most important factors for the Middle East uh, is the, the economic situation, particularly the unemployment of the young people, university graduates. Sometimes uh, I read as they have reached roughly 40% of the young university graduate did not find a job. Uh, this, of course, is not the situation in China, and with the population increase becomes slower, and the, uh, more or less, I think, the employment situation, particularly for the young people, are not that bad. It's quite a, a good. So I don't, I myself, do not have uh, that much concern. I don't know whether other people have uh, this uh, a major concern. I, I see the information uh, flow as quite normal. As it does, the, may, as this alone may not uh, uh, result in some uh, big political turmoil. Mm -hmm. Well, um, there is a survey <laughs> tool, a survey organization in the United States, many of us uh, know, with Gallup Poll, these kinds of big polling organizations. Do you have similar organizations in China that, that do? public opinion polling? Well, I think uh, in this case, I better uh, uh, that uh, uh, <laughs> Professor Lee is head of uh, one of the major organizations at Peking University uh -huh. that does uh, various surveys. They have been, I have been in touch uh, in collaboration with a number of those entities at leading universities. Many of them uh, are represented here. Yeah. So there has been a burgeoning of interest in engaging public opinion mm -hmm. on various issues of public mm -hmm. concern. Some of those actually are conducted for academic purposes to enable scholars and policymakers to use the, make use of the data to better understand what, mm -hmm. what's going on. But another phenomenon that's really been interesting is private polls. Very often, uh, they, are not, they are really done by commercial polling organizations, very often on behalf 
of local governments in order to find out how the people feel about them. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, you don't have the kind of competitive elections, yet local officials are very concerned about how the public uh, 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 sort of think of them, of mm -hmm. their performance. Mm -hmm. In many ways, actually, it's a, it's a very interesting situation in terms of this dynamic between the officials and the, uh, uh, and the people. Mm -hmm. Show your Iowa pride, the Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. The ultimate collection of Iowa Hawkeye merchandise, gifts, and apparel. Help support the University of Iowa. All proceeds benefit men's and women's athletic teams and student programs. The Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. Show your Iowa pride. Call 1-800-HAWK-SHOP or visit www.hawkshop.com. What are some of the main um, issues that polling would be uh, done on? What would be some of the principal issues you would uh, ask uh, your, uh, the people being polled to respond to? My, my institute uh, uh, is mainly uh, conducting some surveys and the, for the long, long digital surveys on the basic social, economic, uh, educational, and uh, all those kind of issues. There's uh, some basic uh, uh, facts about the society, about the population, family, uh, education, employment, income, among others. And we have uh, quite a limited uh, uh, political survey. I think uh, Professor Yu probably uh, has uh, done <laughs> more than, this, than my institute in terms of uh, uh, say around public opinions. So public opinion has become more and more important in China nowadays. And there are three major different kinds of organization, uh, syst three different kinds of systems of organizations are doing uh, that doing uh, public opinion surveys. Uh, the first system is the strongest system, which is the public opinion system. From the central government to the local government, the most urban areas and villages, there is a we call it a city and village survey team. 就是这是非常官方的一个民调系统。So the most powerful system is the official system, the government system, uh, from the central government to the local government, all the way down to the lowest level of administration um, units, like in the villages and in the neighborhoods, in the cities. Um, the government have officials, they are doing these public opinion surveys. 商业系统呢有好多商业调查公司 
呃，这些年来发展起来的，比方说很有影响的，像零点调查公司。嗯、um, ，The second system is just business companies. So there are many business companies. They do、uh, public opinion surveys, and one of them,、uh, which is probably the most famous one, is called Zero Point Company. 第三个系统就是像李强教授他们所说的那种，我们叫学术系统。很多高校和研究机构呢，也有这些民调机构。And the third one is called、uh, academic system. So the universities and other academic organizations they are also doing public opinion surveys. 我们现在我我自己看，我觉得问题是这些民调机构这些年来发展的很快，太多了，不规范。我们需要更多的一些这个呃规范和制度来规范这些民调机构。So personally speaking,、uh, we have many, too many. Like we have a huge number of organizations doing public opinion surveys right now, and the problem is we don't have、uh, regulations over this system and over these organizations. So probably we need some regulations. 还有呢，专业化程度不够，调这种民调的方法就是也不太科学，所以。有的时候你去看那些民调的结果，你会发现呢，同样一个呃问题，就是不同的民调机构会多出截然不同的，甚至相反的这样的结果。So, and also the level of professionalization among these different organizations are different, and they need to improve their professionalization.、Uh, and also, sometimes the method. The methodology is not scientific enough. So for a、uh, for one question, different organizations can provide totally different answers. Aha, aha.、And、Professor Yang, you were going to say something. Yeah, I think one of the most interesting things about the U.S. is our government.、Uh, uh, for example, the Bureau of Labor Statistics or the Bureau of the Census. They are relatively held at arm's length. They independently conduct their work. But even then, you find, for example, the Federal Reserve System. Uh, employing, using outside organizations to help、yeah. them gather data to ensure the accuracy of the statistics. Because very often people wonder, you know, if the only source of information is the government, there is、yeah. always a limit to the accuracy, to the reliability of such data.、Mm -hmm. It's always useful to get a different perspective, whether it's the economy or public opinion, for that matter. The trend in China is going in this direction as well. The government has own, its own statistical system, but increasingly, for example, the People's Bank of China has supported a、uh, survey of、uh, household finance, and there are a variety of academic surveys that complement that offer different perspectives.、Yeah. And at the same time, there are businesses. For example, the HSBC Bank has conducted a survey. Uh, uh, for example, on、um, business sentiments、mm -hmm. and so on, and those、mm -hmm. are very useful.、Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this will be a growing field. This will continue, yes, continue to grow. Yes. Well, I'm sorry to say that our time for this discussion has come to an end. But I want to say thank you so much to Dali Yang next to me here, to Li Chang, thank you, and to Mr. Yu Keping, <laughs> thank you, and then also to our translator Shui Jin, thank you so much. And、um, You have been listening to the first segment of a four-part series on the rise of Chinese public opinion. Please join us next week at this same time for part two of the series. All World Canvas programming is available on the Hawkeye Network on iTunes, KRUI, and the International Programs website, which is international.uiowa.edu. I'm Joan Kerr, and for International Programs at the University of Iowa, thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Good night.